Can you breed a Scottish Highland Bull to a Jersey milking cow? We're gonna find out. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It has been, uh, it's been a little bit, it's been a couple of weeks actually since I posted a video. I unfortunately uh, had a bit of a back injury getting hay. And I say it was getting hay, but it really wasn't getting hay. It was actually something very simple uh, and really stupid that caused it. I've basically been out for about two weeks now. Um, I'm able to walk. I don't stand totally straight. Went and got some hay early in the morning. Went and helped a neighbor in the evening get hay. And on my way home after hay, I got a bit of hay fever. Sneezed a couple times. And on the third sneeze, blew my lower back out. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know what happened to it. Uh, but just was not able to walk for a few days. And then getting up. And walking has been tough so the chores on the farm have been uh, suffering and I am now just behind on so much stuff that I have to do we've got the chicken coop build going on um, I've got hay up here uh, we've got some hay we're getting our hay put up for for the year uh, and I've got more hay to do Creed is helping me out today to feed the cows. We've been moving stuff around, so if you guys, uh, if you guys notice, um, this usually isn't here. This is usually where our Jersey cow is. The Jersey cow is back behind you guys. We've been moving the Jersey cow around the property. We've got little patches of grass everywhere. And so we've been moving that Jersey cow and then just staking her out, allowing her to be able to eat. So the, the milk cow, Jersey cow, Snooky, is putting on a lot of weight. She looks really good. Um, she's over a year old. She's getting bred currently, which is what this video is about today. She's in with our bull uh, August 1st. We stuck our bull in with our Jersey cow. Cows cycle every 23 days on average, which means we need to keep our bull in with the Jersey cow for 23 days and hopefully she will have been gotten, she will have gotten bred. She will be bred, uh, which means in 11 months we will get a calf. So next July we should expect a calf. Uh, that is all wishful thinking. Um, uh, that doesn't always work. Might take might take a couple months before she's bred. Might not. Maybe she gets bred first time, first day. We don't know. We don't know how it works. So uh, out on the farm, you just wing it. Credo. Creed. Creed. We gotta. Hey, we gotta feed the cows. Creed don't care. All right, guys. So all this paneling out here that you. Uh, can see in front. This is all different than you guys are used to. We used to just have Snooky sitting in this pen right here. Uh, we now have our Highland Bull Francis in there. Francis is a two-year-old bull. Uh, absolutely beautiful bull and he is huge compared to the one year that we have had him. We bought Francis last July and he was a yearling bull. He is now two, and he has probably put about eight, nine, ten inches of horn on within a year. Francis is a super sweet Scottish Highland bull. He's eating his morning grass. Creed's feeding him. Uh-oh. Can you feed it to him again? Yeah. You gotta put it through the fence, buddy. 
push it through the fence. Push. Push harder. So if you guys have picked up on Jersey milk cow, Scottish Highland cow, you're probably thinking that's a really weird mix, and it is. It's a very weird mix. Unfortunately, uh, we were going to be AIing our milk cow. Um, we were working with a neighbor on it. She was having uh, the AI specialist. AI stands for artificial insemination. So instead of putting them with a bull, uh, you bring the semen tubes to them and then get them pregnant without all the fun stuff. But unfortunately, the AI guy just didn't show up. No call, no show. Um, so we didn't get her bred last month when we were hoping to. Uh, we are not going to rely on an AI guy. Uh, we do have a bull. So Francis hopefully will uh, get her pregnant. And yes, it'll probably be an ugly cow. It'll be half Jersey and it'll be half Scottish Highland. And that will probably make for something fairly undesirable. But the point of it is, is that Snooky will then start producing milk. And when Snooky is in milk, we will be able to milk her, um, especially Shelby. And then Shelby can make milk, cow products, cheese, all the stuff that Shelby wants to be able to make. Um, and we want milk on the farm. So it serves our purpose. We don't get an ideal calf out of her, but the calf will sell uh, with beef, beef market the way that it is. We'll be able to send it off to market or possibly even find someone locally that's interested in having a half Highland, half Jersey, whatever pops out. So in the pen here, guys, next to us, this is the, the newest pasture that we have fenced off, is the lineup of the girls. These are all of the Scottish Highland cows and heifers that we have on the farm. And they are staying close to the fence because their bull has been separated from them now for about two days. Today is the, today is the third. So this is the third day that they are without their bull. They love their bull and they don't like being away from him. The last time I tried to breed them, I separated them. He actually just jumped over the fence, which was field fencing. So it's easy to push that stuff down and jump over. This is cattle panel. This is all welded wire cattle fencing. So it's not ideal for him to jump up over or on. Um, it's gonna, it would take a bit of effort to damage the fence and get up over it. Not impossible but probably unlikely. So you're probably wondering why we didn't put the Jersey cow in with all of these girls as opposed to separating the bull from this herd. Now ideally, our bull has been with these girls for the last year, ever since he came onto the farm. We had about a three week quarantine period. So he's basically, as of August 1st, been with these girls uh, for a year straight. The Jersey cow is new to the farm. And if you ever have a new cow into the herd, that cow uh, gets the cow gets checked, gets put in its place. And we actually turned the Jersey cow out with these cows and these cows, specifically uh, Lila. Lila is my lead cow, and she's our biggest cow. She's four years old, so she put on a ton of weight this year. Lila is the lead cow. She is the boss, and she quickly came up to our Jersey cow, Snooky, started jumping on her back and I was a little worried that she would actually injure the Jersey cow. The Jersey cow is younger, she is smaller, doesn't have the weight, and I don't want to break her back. Now, the bull, being two years younger than Lila, is quite a bit smaller than Lila, and the Jersey cow actually stands taller than our bull does. So I think she'll be able to hold his weight for breeding no problem, but I don't want her to get roughed up by Lila with her weight uh, because Lila's got an attitude. And if you actually notice, these three are staying clustered together, which they always do. And they always keep their distance from Lila because Lila doesn't like when they get too close and she roughs them up and she uses her horns and she uses her feet and she uses her body.
Now I gotta tell you guys, ever since we have had the bull, I have seen no bull action from this bull specifically. When I went out to buy another bull, this bull was, as a yearling, mm. chasing cows, chasing cows around the pasture, mounting them, and then was being pushed off by the lead bull. Um, so we know he's interested. But a lot of this stuff sometimes takes place at night and you just don't see it. With that being said, we do believe these cows should all be bred at some point. We don't know when, it's all over the place. There is no discipline to it as of this year. We're going to wait for them to calve and then we're gonna separate the bull off of this herd so that we can manage the dates better in the coming years because we want to know when our calves are coming. We would like to be able to control when they come specifically. And an early summer calf would be great out in this area. They don't have to worry about the, the moisture from the rain, the cold dips in the temperatures. A May, June calving season. A May calving season would probably be about ideal for us. We're not trying to get these girls to wait to get them to market. Uh, we are just raising breeding stock and all that means is we need our calves to survive and then we can sell them throughout to year to customers. So a couple things to look for is a cow growing a gigantic belly. One of the issues with free feeding them out on pasture is they are constantly stuffed with grass, which makes them look huge all of the time. So you really have to look on the side that there that Lila is licking, that is the side that they will carry the calf to, the weight to. And so what you have to look for is a wide belly, but then a low hanging belly. And with the Scottish Highlands, you cannot see, you really can't see their udders because their hair is so long. So you can't check for a bag that is starting to fill with milk other than getting in there uh, and feeling it. Now, Lila is usually really good about us going in there and touching her. Uh, sometimes she becomes moody and isn't interested in it, but usually when she's well fed, she'll let us do it. Because my back uh, is not ready to wrestle Lila, I'm actually gonna send Deegan in there so the job is his uh, to go in and check her bags. And so what we're looking for is her bags filling up and then uh, also production of milk. As they get closer, they will begin to um, possibly drip or you can get milk from the teat. So that's what we're looking for. And then that'll just let us know that we are very close to having a calf on the farm. Now Lila has put on a ton of weight this year as a four year old. She would have been four in about uh, February, March. So as a four year old, they put on a lot of weight. At the same time, we turned her loose out here. So natural weight, natural size growth mixed with unlimited amounts of food mixed with a calf has made for a gigantic and hard to tell if pregnant Lila. All right, Deegan, get to it, buddy. Deegan says they feel normal, they are not filling up just yet. So it is an absolute waiting game with these cows when you just don't know if they're pregnant and when they got bred or if they even got bred. Francis is, uh, like I said, he is now a two year old bull. We've had him for a year. So he is an unproven bull, but he is a registered bull, comes from great stock. His dad is a fantastic looking bull. He is a fantastic looking bull. So we just need him to spread his genetics. Is love in the air, guys? I, I don't know. We will keep you guys updated and see uh, how this thing goes with breeding our Scottish Highland Bull to our Jersey milk cow. Any update, any action, uh, we will fire up the camera and show you guys as of right now. They're just eating food and walking around the pen separate. All right guys, that is it for this video. I appreciate you guys being here. Hit that subscribe button if you are new. We have a lot of things to get to on the farm. Being behind, I actually have a neighbor who needs some help milling some wood, so he's gonna be bringing down a log so that we can mill him some stairs, uh, stair treads, and uh, that is going to be taking place here in a couple of days. I also have to get my tractor fixed. We blew a seal on it, so I will have to uh, get that fixed as well. So you guys stay tuned for those videos and all of the upcoming stuff on the farm as we race to catch up to where we were before the back injury.
Thank you so much for watching, guys, and we will catch you on the next one.